Hey guys, so in the last video we stopped where we have to find a, b, and get rid of the imaginary parts of the equation. So let's get started. Well, let's see. We have cos of negative theta that is equal to cos theta and sine of negative theta that is equal to negative sine theta. Um, these are rules. You can find them in any math book. But you have to know them for, for now. Okay, now we just have to expand. And remember the first formula we saw in the last video was um, cos theta plus i sine theta all to the power of n. This is equal to cos n theta plus i sine n theta. So all that happened was the n just went, came before the thetas. So we can rewrite this expression here as a times the square root of 2 to the power of n times cos n of pi over 4 minus i sine n of pi over 4. So now I did two steps. The first one was to get rid of the negative signs and causes uh, the negative sign just disappears. For sine, all that happened was the sign went from here and it replaced um, the plus sign. So we have minus or a negative sign over here. Okay, so that's the first part. And the second thing I did was I introduced the n here and here and I raised square root of 2 to the power of n. Alright, so now this, this was the a part. So all of this will be plus b and b will have the same thing. So you have um, the square root of 2 to the power of n times cos of um, n times pi over 4 plus I sine and pi over 4 and the reason nothing changed is because theta is positive here so both of them are positive so they have a positive theta and that means that nothing will change so all, all I did was write the power of n here and there and I raised root of 2 to the power of n Alright, so now we need to take the common factors. So, we have the common factors are this negative 2 to the power of n, and we have cos n pi over 4, cos n pi over 4, and the only difference is that um, i sine theta, and here, this is negative, this is positive. So what you're going to do is this you're going to take k1 and set it equal to a plus b and k1 is going to represent your cos and you have k2 is equal to a minus b times i and that will represent the sign alright so what we're going to do now is we're going to combine both expressions into one so we're going to have the square root of 2 to the power of n, which was a common factor, times k1, and k1 will have cos, will have cos n theta or n pi over 4 as a common factor, times k2, and this will have sine n theta as a common factor. This is the tricky step that you, where you have to convert this whole expression, this big expression here, to this one. So all that happened is the square root of square root of two to the power of n just went outside. So this came outside of the whole of the whole equation. And then if you expand this term, you're gonna have a here 
and A here. You're going to have a B here and a B here. That's if you expand it. Okay, so uh, what's happening now is you're combining A. You have cos pi over this term. The cosses are the same. So A plus B with cos and theta as a common factor. That will be one, one term. So that's K1. And that's how we got this part here. And now the second part, which was negative a times i sine theta, so this part here, combined with this, we have i sine theta as a common factor. So that will combine to give you negative a plus b, or I just rewrote it here as a minus b, and that will give you k2. And that's all that happened. If you don't get this, you can leave me a comment, I can further explain it. But this is what we did, this is the concept of what we did. Alright, so all of this is equal to a n. So we simplified this term to that term here. And we got rid of the imaginary part. So there are, there are no more i's. And now we have to use the initial conditions, which were a0 is equal to 1, and a1 is equal to 3. We're going to use the, these two conditions to find k1 and k2. So a so a0 is equal to 1, and that will give you the square root of 2 to the power of 0 times k1 times cos of 0 times pi over 4 times, or sorry, this should actually be plus, so here you have plus, so plus um, k2 times sine of 0 times pi over 4. So 1 is equal to, well anything to the power of 0 is 1, times k1, well cos 0 is 1. So 0 times pi over 4, this will give you 0, and cos 0 is 1, so you'll have k1 times 1. And sine, well, 0 times pi over 4, this is equal to 0, and sine 0 is equal to 0. So plus k2 times 0. And this will give you that um, 1, k1 is equal to 1. So this cancelled out, so this will cancel out. Um, 1 times k1 times 1 is equal to k1, and that is equal to 1. And now to solve for a1. So we have a1, which is equal to 3, is equal to the square root of 2 to the power of 1, times k1 times cos of 1, times pi over 4, or cos of pi over 4, plus k2 times sine of 1 times pi over 4. Alright, so you got 3 is equal to the square root of 2, and we know that k1 is equal to 1, so 1 times cos of pi over 4, well, so 1 times um, cos pi over 4 and pi over 4 is equal to 1 over root 2 plus k2 times well sine pi over 4 this is also equal to 1 over root 2 so 1 over the square root of 2 and now we see that the pi over the square root of 2 can cancel out so this everything here can cancel out and you'll be left with 3 is equal to 1 plus k2. So that means that k2 is equal to 2. So now we have k1 and k2. Now we have to replace it into this formula. So a n is equal to um, square root of 2 to the power of n um, times cos or yeah k1 and k1 was 1. So, 1 times cos of n 
times pi over 4 plus k2 which is 2 times sine of n times pi over 4 and this is the answer to how to solve complex recurrence relations again this is not the easiest thing in the world but with enough practice um, it's all just about getting the steps um, if you guys have any questions uh, please leave me a comment or send me a message uh, don't forget to rate and subscribe I hope this all made sense and I'll see you in the next video.